In this video, we're going to create a filter function output formula that is controlled by checkbox criteria in Excel. So what you see here is a preview of what we're going to create today. To the left here, I have a data set of loan records in this table here. To the right, I have a filter function output formula that is controlled by this checkbox criteria here in the middle of the sheet. So if I only wanted to pull back branch to business loans, I can simply uncheck some of these other checkbox criteria and it updates automatically. Now one thing I need to mention before we get into this, the filter function is currently only available in either Office 365 or Excel 2021. So unfortunately, if you don't have either of those, it's not available yet. So the first thing I want to do is convert this range over here that I want to filter on into a table. And the reason I want to do that is because it's going to make it so much easier to refer to this range of cells when we're inputting it in the filter function. So to convert it to a table, all I need to do is click anywhere in this data range and hit control T. This create table box will appear. It just selects that entire range and just click OK and it's now a table. So the next thing we want to do is add our check boxes to these cells here. So to do that, we need to go up to the developer ribbon and insert an the checkbox icon. Now, if you don't see the developer ribbon up top, you may need to save this file as a macro enabled workbook. So that would be this option here. And after that, if you still do not see it, you would need to go to file and then options and customize ribbon and make sure that this developer checkbox is checked here and click OK. So now I'm going to go up to the developer ribbon. I'm going to go to insert checkbox. I will click in the cell that I want to place it in. I'm going to need to resize it. I'm going to click inside this text area here and hit the end key and then backspace because I don't want any text. So I'm also going to resize this to make it just so that it's big enough for just the checkbox itself. And I'm going to resize the column here. So what I'm going to do is click in the cell to the right and then hit my arrow key so that I select it. And then I'm going to hold down the shift key and hit the down arrow twice to select all the cells below it. Hit control D to copy it below. I'm going to hit control C to copy all of that and then control V to paste it down here. I'm going to resize it just a tad more. And now what we need to do is link these checkboxes to the cell they're in. So to do that, we're going to right click, go to Format Control. This control ribbon should be the default ribbon that gets displayed. So there's a little box here for cell link. So this is in cell H3, and that's the cell we want. So unfortunately, you have to do this one by one for each cell. You cannot copy this down. So I'm going to fast forward to where I've already done this and not take up video time doing that. So I have all of these cells containing our checkboxes linked to the cells they're in. So now I want to insert an if formula to the right of them. So if a checkbox is checked, it has a value of true. If it is unchecked, it has a value of false. So we want to reference the cell containing our checkbox, see if it's equal to true or checked. If it is, we want to pull in the value to the left of it. If it is unchecked or false, we don't want to pull in anything. So now you can see it's linked to our checkbox and this value here is going to be the criteria for our filter. So I'm going to copy this down to these other cells 
and now we have all of our filter criteria cells. So we're almost ready to input our formula. The last thing I want to do is get our table name. So I'm going to click anywhere in our table, go to table design. Up here it gives the table name. Excel gives it a generic table for. I'm going to rename this to loan data. We're going to input our filter function. The first input is the array we want to filter on. That is going to be our loan data table. That's all we need to input there. The next input is our criteria column and the criteria value for that column. So again we're going to reference our loan data table. To get to a specific column in a table reference all we need to do is add an opening bracket. As soon as I do that it lists all of our column headers. So our first criteria column is going to be location. I'm going to add an ending bracket and we want anything in that location column that is equal to our first criteria cell which is I3. So for now I'm just going to leave it at that and show you what this looks like. The final argument is optional. Um, it's just the message you want to display it if no matches are found. We'll go ahead and just put no records found. So right now our only criteria is branch 1. So it pulls back all the records for branch 1. If I unselect this it displays our no records found message. So now we want to repeat this step for these other two criteria values. So what I need to do here is nest what we've already created in the second input in a set of parentheses. I'm going to copy it and change the cell reference. We need to add a plus in between each one and I'll explain why in a moment so just bear with me. So now we have an output with all three branches and if I only want to see branch 2 you can see it updates automatically. So how this works with these pluses in between I'll begin by saying that the filter function when it looks for matches it returns true every time there's a match in our criteria column if there's not a match it returns false. So when you have multiple criteria what you have to do is add a plus in between the different criteria and what the plus does is it converts those true and falses into their numerical equivalents of ones for true zeros for false. So if I highlight that region and hit F9, you can see anytime there's a match, because right now we're only filtering on branch 2, in the first row containing data, there's a match, so that returns 1 for true. There's no matches until the 6th row, and then there's another true or 1 right there. So the filter then filters on just the ones, and that is our output. When you hit F9, make sure you don't hit enter because it will stay like this. We don't want that, so I'm going to hit escape. So what we've had thus far with our criteria is or criteria, branch 1, 2, or 3, because it's all in the same column. What we have down here in relation to what we have up here is an AND condition because it's in a different column. So these three are ORs in relation to this column by itself, but in relation to this other column, it's an AND condition. So we have to approach this differently. What we need to do is take what we've already created up here and nest it in a set of parentheses on the outside. And what we need to do, rather than add our next column criteria with a plus, we need to add a multiplication symbol. 
and I'll show you how that works in a moment. So again, bear with me. So I'm going to have a set of outer brackets for our three conditions in our next column and then our first criteria inside this set of inner parentheses. So again, we have our loan data table. This time we're looking at the loan type column and we want anything in that column that is equal to auto loans. So I'm going to copy this again and do the same thing I did last time, paste and change the cell reference. So I hit enter and now if I just filter on business and auto, you can see it updates automatically. If I want to throw branch three in there, business and auto, I can do that. So how this works, if I highlight everything we've created again, and I'm going to hit F9, we have two criteria columns now, and there has to be a match in both columns. So there has to be a one in this column and a one in this column that get multiplied by each other to end in a value of one. So that's where the multiplication comes in. So for example, we don't have a match until we get down here where we have both branch two and auto or business. So down here in row six, is where we get our first match because one times one is one. Anything else results in zero. One times zero is zero because there's a match in one column but not the other. Or there's a match in neither column which is zero times zero. So again, it ultimately still just filters on one. Well, that is all for now. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe.